How does one approach a video about traditional pocket knives? Drunk? Which country should you represent? What's the price point? How do you choose them? How do you keep people from bitching about not including a specific knife? Well, it's the internet, it's impossible. But let me explain my process. I did some forum research on traditional pocket knives with an emphasis on world knives, read suggestions, researched brands, listened to subscribers, and exchanged emails with real knife people because I'm not one. This video might need more than one part because I didn't get to try every pocket knife I wanted to, but they do all have things in common. Budget friendly, I limited my price to no more than $50. They're easy to get and still being made. None have pocket clips, all are folding knives, and all are produced in countries outside of the USA except one. And those countries are not named China. Not that anything is inherently wrong with Chinese made stuff, I'm just sick of reviewing so much stuff from there. In this video there are nine knives and I'll pick my top three. Which ones will be chopped? I've reviewed nearly all of these individually so watch those reviews for a better overview on each knife. I'll start with the random order of knives I like least and end with my besties. First is the Lagule. This one is the hardest knife to find under $50 in the list unless you steal it. That's if you want one made by a French person in French land. Usually if it doesn't say France on the blade somewhere, it's probably a Chinese lagule. Maybe they're made by French immigrants in China. I don't know. But my particular knife is a G. David, and it's tiny. It has some pretty designs on the back spring. Uh, there's a fly. I think that's a fly there. Some fancy brass liners. Sandvik steel. And I want to say olive wood handles. I bought this knife off eBay and I was expecting a larger knife. However, it was my fault for paying about $50 for a knife that didn't have a listed size and that I didn't bother to email the, um, lister. I know. This knife is non-locking but has a strong back spring. I would be very surprised if I ever bought another Lagule because the larger ones run you between $50 and $200 and are just really ornate folding knives. If you're on a budget and you want a basic tool, Spending more than $50 is kind of excessive. You can get a larger one for under $50, but you gotta look. Next, the Svord Peasant. These knives are about $15, and the company was started in the early to mid-80s. They have about a 3-inch blade and probably take up more pocket room than the other knives here. The styling of this New Zealand-made knife really doesn't do anything for me. It's big in the pocket, you know, for the size of cutting edge you get too. The handles can be had in many colors, and materials, and even in a smaller size. The Svord Peasant is a non-locking friction folder, and one of the cheapest knives here. There's nothing wrong with it, it's just not really my thing. Although the handle is comfortable and large, at least on the plastic version ones. The Higo Nakami, this Japanese knife, comes in many sizes, and several companies make higher-end versions of this style knife. I paid about $25 for it. And like the Svord Peasant, it's a non-locking friction folder. It's super easy to sharpen. QC isn't good though, with iffy blade centering and the handle's a little warped. And the blade can easily ding itself on the inside of the folded brass handle if you're not careful when you close it. I think it's cool looking, but a bit uncomfortable to hold. This particular knife here is the XL size, and the design dates back to the early 1900s. Check out my full review for more info. The Duke Duke. Like the Higo no Kami, this one is rough around the edges, literally. Expect some sharp handle areas and uneven paint, and it'll run you about $20 to $30 depending on what size you get. I have the smaller version with just about a 3 inch blade, however there's a 3.5 inch blade if you need something bigger, and then there's other ones with different designs on their handle if you want one that looks less evil. This is also French and made from a design that dates back to, I believe, the 1930s. You can just Wikipedia it and figure out yourself just like I did. I like the way it looks, but since I got the smaller size, I don't use it much. Also, there are better knives in this video with better fit and finish for around the same price. Unless you like knives that look like they've already been used when you buy them new. Alright, so let's do two knives that aren't like my top three, but are still uh, more recommended than the other ones have been so far. We're not at the top three, but close. Next, the MAM, M-A-M, 2043. M-A-M, or MAM, makes cheap knives in Portugal, some lock. Some don't. This one is a sheep's foot style blade in stainless steel. You can get regular shaped blades. 
if you like to. It uses a liner lock of sorts and costs an ultra cheap $12. While it is well constructed, it is a simple design and made mostly of wood. It would make a great everyday carry light use knife, but seeing as it's entirely wood handled, those knives can be harder, or I guess these knives can be harder to close when they're wet. Maybe this knife is better suited for drier conditions. How about the Open L8? French knife comes in many sizes, but I got the 8 because it's in the mid 3 inch blade range. The number after the Oppenel uh, product name, that usually refers to the basic centimeter range for the blade, so like the 6 would be 6 centimeters, the 5 would be 5 centimeters. It has a nice comfortable handle and the blade can be had in stainless or carbon steel. I chose carbon steel. Carbon steel blades need more maintenance and need to be cleaned and dried after each picnic to prevent rust. But at $15, it's a great value. The handle makes it a bit big for pocket carry because of its bulbousness. And the knife can be harder to open if it gets wet because the wood swells around the pin that the knife blade pivots on. They make a synthetic handled version if you need something for the outdoors and work around moisture like a rainy picnic. Also, this blade has a locking neck sleeve mechanism. Okay, finally my top three. First, the Spain made, the Spanish made, Kudmin Classic. This knife don't lock and is similar to the Lagule, except it's cheaper and has less frilly shit on it. If you want something in a decent size like the Lagule, with a good fit and finish but don't feel the need for French artisans to carve designs into the back spring, probably Chinese French artisans, buy this one. You can find one for $20 to $30 on Amazon. How about the case Sodbuster, full-size CV, CV is the blade steel variety. These knives can be had in the carbon steel version like here, or a stainless and smaller size called the Junior. I like a blade in the mid three inch range, I know I've said that before, and this is that. It also has a nice long comfortable handle and comes in other color and handle variation materials other than P like the color pictured here. The knife can be had for $20 to $60 or probably more depending on the trim options and sizes. This is the only made in USA knife here and it's a reasonable price for America. You know, American made stuff. Finally, the Mercator K55K. Mercator? Mercator. Who gives a shit? You can find this knife for about $25 everywhere on the internet. Unless you buy it from Best Made, who charges $42 for uh, curating it for you. Actually, that's a great idea. And if you'd like to buy this directly from me, email me and it'll only cost you $100. Used. This knife is made in Germany and has a metal handle similar to the Duke Duke, but it's well-rounded, painted evenly, and costs about the same. I like this knife the most because it feels nice in the hand, has a nice flat ground blade for slicing, and also has a picture of a cat on the side. Alright, so these traditional pocket knives are cool and fun, but come with caveats. None of pocket clips, something I kind of require in a pocket knife. I hate knives floating around in the bottom of my pockets with, you know, change and lint. There are also a bunch of knives not here. Maybe in the future, part two, I'll have something more. In the meantime, like, subscribe, comment, look in the description below for links to those review videos I've done and links to the products on, I don't know, Amazon or wherever. Thanks for watching.